Hello and welcome to the Dead Air Dudes. I'm Izzy. I'm Chewbacca. No, I'm Raka. What's up, guys? You know what we're going to talk about today. Welcome back, Dead Air Dudes Nation, as we continue our Mandalorian Season 2 review. But we had to, instead of doing two episodes, we had to just, you know, devote a full episode to the latest episode of The Mandalorian. Rock oh, we had, to jump, we had to jump right on this, people. And you know we have to, because this has been pretty much, in my opinion, the only shining star in the Disney Channel um, universe. And quite honestly, Mandalorian is one of the better, if not top five shows currently out there that's like you're hanging on the edge of your seat for the next episode, the next episode, you know, the boys up there, stuff like that is, is going on. But this episode, we had to pause. And Walking Dead? Excuse, say what? Uh, I'm sorry. We <laughs> had to dive in there because obviously this episode, this past episode, uh, episode number five. Five. Who makes an appearance? And... Perfectly described, The Jedi, the name of the episode. Perfectly, perfectly titled. They do everything perfectly. It's very simple. It's direct. The music is awesome. The artwork at the end of the episode is awesome. And The Jedi in question is none other than Shoka Tenu, played by Rodario Dawson. In the very beginning, a few... Big stars, I guess, rolled out in the first season. But it seems like in this season, it had such a following. Now it's chock full of nuts and chock full of... The celebrity door is kicked wide open. You know, Michael Breen is is in it. I mean, now Dario Dawson is is uh, one of the heralded, if not the, the, the star Jedi everyone was waiting for. We had two monster stars in the last episode as Man- Mandalorians. Mm-hmm. Mandalorians being Bo Katana and, and the other one, sorry, from The Walking Dead. So now we have the long anticipated arrival of Shoka Tano, who is the apprentice, the Padawan under Anakin Skywalker. Now, supposedly, this whole world of the Mandalorian takes place roughly five years, I think, or 10 years, something like that. It's approximately, from what I remember, what they mentioned, I think it's seven years after the end of Jedi. So the Empire has crumbled, but it's in pieces. And just like in any fallen empire, everybody now is vying for power. And people who were suppressed before want to have their self-autonomy. And now Ashoka Tenu for the backstory of everybody who already knows, but I'm just going to go quick zip through because the Clone Wars, apparently the animated series is canon. So a lot of deep, deep, hardcore Star Wars fans consider that canon. So you have to follow that well, long. Even, even Disney, you know, consider it canon. And okay. mind you, the, the, uh, the second showrunner to The Mandalorian is none other than Dave Filoni, who... Show, who was the showrunner for the Clone Wars and created the Clone Wars. So, and he directed and wrote this episode. So, obviously, he knows what the heck he's doing, right. what he's talking about. And these are his, these are the toys, the toys in his, in his playpen that they're playing with. So, and now, it's a fanboy wet dream come true. Oh, do I need a moment? Sorry. Know. Do you need a moment? <laughs> you have a little dribble here. Uh, that, that, uh, that's all love, baby. It's all love. I'm a little chapped. But so for those that do know, I'm going to fill in some blanks in that the Clone Wars had seen uh, not completely pure Jedi Order. It's a, It was tainted. It was extending more than its reach than it was intended to be. At the same time, you had Order 66 which wiped out all the Jedi, even the kids. Wow. And we find out that 
Baby Yoda's real name is Gorgu. Gorgu. Gorgon. Gorgodola? Gorgon. Gorgon. But that's his significant. Not because you give a name oh, to the kid. Time out. Before we continue, what do you think of the name? Oh, it is a deviation from the wise. The Yodas, the Yodalays, the Yoda Yodos, the Yo Yos, the Yayas. I, I don't know where the hell they pull that out of. Um, uh, what do you feel about the name? I mean, he kind of resembles Godzilla and baby Godzilla, but... I kind of dig it. I mean, to be honest, at first I'm thinking, all right, any name that you give the character is going to be a disappointment unless, you know... You deviate a bit. It, it wasn't bad. No, it, I mean, it sounded almost like an anime character, but hey, that's not bad either. Yeah, I mean... It, it kind of looks like one. It's not crazy. I mean, if you look at Yoda, he doesn't have the big bug out eyes as baby Yoda has. But the whole point to bring up his name wasn't the fact to assign a name to the kid. The, she can sense from him, he was in the temple. He was already under training from other Jedis yeah. before the whole spurt. He was training for years already. For years. It's Remember, not he's a 50-year-old baby. But he's got strong force, but he's still a baby, meaning he's immature, he's attached. Now, the whole significance of her saying she's not going to train him because he's attached and he see, she has seen that elsewhere is because, and I was filled in with this information from um, very Star Wars hardened reference guide who's on assignment. Prior to this meeting, Ashoka Tenu had a confrontation with Darth Vader. And Darth Vader, when got revealed, was once her Jedi Master. She was fractured. How did this happen? You were once my teacher. Now you're completely on the dark side and you're about to kick my ass. But from what I understand, she kicks Darth Vader's ass. I find it very hard to believe. Sorry. Erroneous. She, and the other part to this is not only is Vader involved, not only is Anakin involved, not only is the Jedi Order destroyed, there was a wipeout with the kids. Baby Yoda, now Gorgu, is one of those kids. She doesn't want to train him. But keep in mind with Star Wars canon, technically, she is not a Jedi. What? She never passed the Jedi Master trials, and she left the Order because she found the Jedi Order to be not what it's supposed to be. It wasn't noble. It was. It had um, not scandalous. What's the word? They didn't live up to their code. It wasn't what she thought it would be. So she has the Force. She's technically not a Jedi. And you have the attachment between Baby Yoda and Mando that she sees. I'm not going to mess with that. Now, all right. But she I'm, leads him to where he could go. This is a lot to unpack here. All right. Um, it's a lot. This is a great episode. This is why we have to pause uh, and step in here. This is the theory that you have that all this is happening. So then... Obviously, spoilers abound, so, you know, if you haven't watched it, too bad. You know, go back and watch it. So, oh, um, so the person she speaks, she speaks with the mountain that she says that you take Gorgu to the mountain, to the top of the mountain, and if he accepts the, accepts the, you know, the force, then, you know, a Jedi will come out of the woodwork and actually freaking train him, you know, but there's not many left. Again. So, this is one of the most clever cliffhangers that the producers, writers, and directors, and creative forces and showrunners, the whole crew, one of the most clever cliffhangers that they put out there. Because now all of us guys who are in the Star Wars universe are wondering, who's going to answer that call? May not also be good, right? There's a lot of bad guys running out there. Uh -huh. There's still uh, uh, 
Gideon's out there. You still have, which everyone doesn't know yet, but you know, but we know because Jedi. of the Star Wars movies. Okay, she said Jedi. She didn't say Jedi. this. Well, she didn't say she's a Jedi. But anybody with the Force can feel it. No, we know Moff is Force sensitive. We don't know. We don't know how much Force he has. We yeah, but who's out sensitive. there that can sense the Force? Palpatine. Well, we know. We know that Palpatine's around. He can sense the Force. Who? Uh, we know that Snoke's around. Luke Skywalker is still around. Remember, and if you remember this, Leia, after Return of Jedi, started her training. She's wow. a. Wow. Uh, see, whole see, now, crew, see, now. Whole crew from Clone Wars who's around. Ezra and the whole ban- batch. Sabine, there's a whole bunch of other Jedis around. Raka is smoking, you know, too much of Oh, the- no, no. The peace pipe is going up, baby. East you know, cigarettes and all. Raka <laughs> uh, is, uh, has, been, has been in too much of the nipping sherry, you know. So. Now, they dropped, they decided to, to build this cascading hill. Yeah. And right now they just blew it all up on the top. Because the last thing they left you with is, who do you work for? Who do you work for? Which was asking the woman. Je- is Admiral, what's his face? Thrawn. Thrawn. Admiral Thrawn, who's another big character. He is one of those sinister badasses that uh, is not your typical general. He's smart, witty. He's unorthodox. He will get what he needs to get. He could very well be Moff Gideon's boss. So all you comic comic collectors, go pick up the first appearance of Admiral Thrawn. I'm telling heard, you. Heard it here, probably second, third, fourth. I'm you. So <laughs> a lot of nuggets, a lot of golden nuggets left, a lot of Easter eggs, a lot of things to go on. I'm psyched. This thing has been crazy. It was one of the best episodes. Um, blew my top off, and I got to say, it, it doesn't stop the the amount of tying in very well with Clone Wars, the Star Wars mainstream, uh, everything. Freaking awesome, man! No, no, it was it was a great episode, and I love the fact that um that Disney has and Lucasfilm has allowed Favreau and Filoni to really flesh out. The canon, the the, the 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 universe as they as they see fit, you know, because as Disney's doing with Marvel, how Marvel is more concentrating on to TV shows than the movies. It seems that Star Wars is going to do the same thing. You have a supposed uh, possibly a Boba Fett series come on. You have a uh, um. Offshoots, yeah. I have a, a Cassian Andor series uh, that's, that's about to debut any day now. But you, so Andor um, is going to have her own, uh, apparently. I uh, quite possibly. Why? Why the heck not? And you also, there have been rumors of talking about it. Darth Maul. You have supposedly. Then, of course, you have the one that everyone's been waiting for is the Obi Wan Kenobi. What the hell happened, Obi Wan Kenobi, in between the Clone Wars and in between uh, between all the all this uh, all the other stuff, you know? So. You know, but yeah, I mean, I mean, if you look back at the episode as a standalone episode by itself, forget about all the tie-ins, how they presented her. I'm going to say, even though it's she's not technically her Jedi skill and her fighting was fantastic. The lightsaber. So then you appreciated her. Oh my God. Her, she she could have taken down the whole thing herself. Yeah. So then you thought Rosario Dawson did a did a pretty good job. Fantastic. I mean, blown away by everything so far. And the way she looked was, was, was to your liking as far as, you know, how the, how the, you know. In my opinion, the, it. The animated series was. It was pretty good. Um, if I had to nitpick, I mean, I could see some crinkles in the, the hairpiece thing that maybe they could have made in such a way that it's, it didn't have that. It kind of looked more of like a. <clears throat> like a real piece instead of maybe an organic part of her head. I don't know. I don't care. I'm looking past that. But, but I think they didn't want it to be CGI. They wanted it to be something legitimate, something actual, actually there. 
I can see the I can see past any of that stuff because I think the whole thing was um, fantastic. Not to mention they threw in there uh, a character from Aliens and Terminator. Oh well, yeah, you can't you can you can't beat that. A little a little okay. fun fact also that uh, you might not have noticed, or maybe you have, and you know, the magistrate who was um she he's played by Diana Lee Inosanto who is the daughter of martial arts legend Dan and his wife, Sue Inosanto. Now, why is that a big deal? Because she's also the goddaughter of none other than Bruce Lee. Okay, she's a stunt woman in her own right, and she's a master you know, martial artist. And you can tell when they had the battle that a lot of the choreography and everything was, you know, that's why they made a whole big deal about, you know, putting her in, you know, Hey, she popped out one of the lightsabers. Yeah, and I was, she's a uh, you know, obviously you know she's a a master in a, in the Filipino arts, you know. So uh, I mean, um, they've kept a pretty good tight lid on a few things, and they eke out information as needed. But it seems like we're headed for a pretty good casting from here on in. I think everyone and their mother wants to get in on this. No, I know, but the problem is, is that. Get it takes away a bit. I mean, for season three, guys, I mean, savor this and get ready to watch it again and again because season three, no time soon. So just, 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 just yeah, I, I don't want to you know, put a damper on the parade, but let's just, you know, soak it all in and not be in a hurry to end it because it's going to be, it's going to take a while. But all, all, right, in, so all in all, excellent. fantastic episode. The force be with you, and we have some other trickling in Hollywood news. Yeah, we have some a couple of news and notes. Instead of doing a whole episode of rapid fire, I'm just gonna spot a couple of things out to you. See what you like, see what you don't. What do you think? You know. And uh, basically, we start with Marvel. Marvel already they've been trickling some news little by little. We know that the finished films are Shang Chi. The Eternals and Black Widow. Black Widow, which at this point, they might as well just put it up on the freaking on the on the Disney Plus. Like, you know, DC's gonna do it with, with uh, Wonder Woman. It's gonna be thirty nine ninety nine. Yeah, well, I I, I I don't think so. I mean, the Mulan special. Yeah, the Mulan special. And then you have in production, you have Spider Man three, which is already in production, and Doctor Strange two, which started production recently as well. You have in pre-production, you have Blade, you have Thor, Love and Thunder, which now you have Chris Pratt joining the cast. So it's going to be almost like a Avengers 4 or Avengers 5. Avengers 5 slash Guardians Galaxy 3. Or two and a half. There you go. Or four. There you go. Something like that. And they actually, they actually announced that they have plans to, for Deadpool 3, which... Duh. And they're gonna keep it. Uh, they're gonna keep it R-rated. So, and what everybody is was wondering about. You have rumors. You see rumors left and right. Mbaku is gonna be Black Panther. Shuri is gonna be Black Panther. They're gonna bring back Killmonger for Black Panther. All we know is that shooting is starting in July. That's all we know. Oh, so you know, and now you have. They've already mentioned, like I mentioned also in the review, that they are focusing more of their thing on TV shows, on Disney Plus, as opposed to movies. That's why you only have three movies coming out, you know, not including Black Widow in the upcoming year. And you have obviously WandaVision, which is complete. I think it should be coming out in December, I believe. You have Winter Soldier and Falcon, which also is either complete or just about to be finished. Loki's done, and you have filming, you have Ms. Marvel, you have um, She-Hulk, and you have Moon Knight, which is coming up soon. So, Man, that's a shitload of stuff on the dock. Things that like, all half of them should have been out already this year. Yeah, well, continuing with Disney, you see that Disney themselves are going to push a lot of their movies, their live-action films, straight to the platform on the streaming service. You have Cruella, 
with Emma Stone. You have Pinocchio with Tom Hanks. And you have Peter Pan and Wendy. Both, all, well, all three will probably premiere on Disney Plus in the upcoming months. What, no Frozen Christmas special? No, no Frozen Christmas special. <laughs> and you probably guys have probably heard of this, that The Last of Us will be, is being greenlit for a TV series at HBO Max. It's official. We got a full season, full episodes. Uh, in addition to Assassin's Creed, it's going to be a series, as well as Halo at Showtime, it's going to be a series. Oh, nice segue into the video game world because there also is uh, a few leaked information here and there. Uh, I'm sure it's all Netflix driven about the revamped Resident Evil 2.0. Yeah. Will, um, which ties in the new video game release a new version of Resident Evil into a series on Netflix, hopefully coming out in February. Which looks pretty damn awesome. If you guys get a chance, watch the trailer. I'll, we'll try to link it if we can. Check it out. It looks like, you know, a, a cut scene come to life. It looks really good. You know, I do believe you have, don't quote me, I do believe you have, I think it's Jill and Claire, and they're going to save... Chris, I think it is with Leon. It's, it's it's got all the characters, and yeah, you know, so it should be it should be good. So yeah, I was gonna post, I was gonna mention some some news about the video game awards, but I'm, I think they already happened. I'm not sure, so I don't want to give old news. But if you guys know about it, you know. But if not, game of the year just gonna, just gonna give you you know the the, the nominees for game of the year. You have Animal Crossing, New Horizons. You have Doom Eternal. You have the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Mm. Yeah, Ghost of, Ghost of Shinuma, Shumina. Jeez, I mangle that one all, all the time. You have Hades, and you have The Last of Us Part Two. If if you had to pick, I think Last of Us and maybe uh, Ghost. It's gonna be. A... I think The Last of Us is a shoo-in to win, but yeah. you know. I mean, the high, the high train is, was real with that one. So, and that's pretty much that was our quickie little, you know, thing. Anybody, if you have not seen the episode Two Mandalorian, go watch it, enjoy it, come back, let us know, like, comment, subscribe to this and all our videos. And if you like what we're doing, tell a friend. Thanks a lot, people. Keep doing it, like and subscribing. Again, the Mandalorian last episode was mint. It was wholesome. It was everything you could think of. And this is the way. I'm Raka. I'm Izzy. This is the way. Save the whales. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care, guys.